we have the video at uh, I believe at a very uh, regular speed here so we can explain exactly how we're going to install the body into the skin I like to give a little bit of a kink to the neck wire and push it exactly right where it needs to go in and which is on top of the body that's exactly where um, neck attaches to the body naturally when you're skinning the bird if you pay attention that's exactly where the neck goes so pull the wire from the other side and then bend it back and by pushing it back into the body you're making it secure um, I believe I'm using a, I can't remember but by the look of it if I remember right um, on this bird I decided to use on the neck I decided to use some brass wire that's why it's kind of like a golden color so we we move on to the next if you notice I have pre-measured my wires I don't like too long wires because I have to cut them short again while I'm working so I have usually um, on my birds uh, pre-cut my wire so I know exactly how long they're going to be it's usually um, uh, I measure it mentally like I mean like it, I imagine it in my mind how long it needs to be and I think it's based on experience if you, if you want to call it that way but you can always pay attention to what you're doing and then cut the wires to the right length instead of needing to uh, adjust them while you're working so when I install the wing wire, I like to push the body back inside the skin a little bit so it frees up the skin so there's not a lot of tension on it. And then push the leg wires into the body. Measure up the thigh length. Have pre-marked your areas that where you were going to push the wire in. And bend the, X, the, the other end of the wire back into the body. See, when you have it pre-measured, you're working with a piece of wire that has both ends sharpened by a bench grinder. If you cut that sharp end, then you have a cut end of the wire that you need to push into the foam, and it doesn't really go in properly or securely or at least not as securely as a sharp end of the wire would go in. So I like him to be sharp, super sharp. So all the wires are in. We gently pull the skin over the body, usually from the top toward the bottom of the, or the lower part of the body. I like to pull the skin over and push the tail to the lower part of the body where it needs to be. And then uh, I'm not sure if I have uh, shown in this video or not, or in this uh, segment, but I usually have um, a piece of wire that is shaped like a U, letter U, and I push it right into the tail. That would secure the tail. And uh, using one strand of string or thread, going zigzag all the way down to the lower end of the body, closing up the skin. And every half inch or an inch of sewing, I push the skin up and uh, with the use of a little paintbrush, I apply some of my um, acrylic caulking underneath this skin. So as I'm sewing, I'm applying the glue underneath this skin. Otherwise, you have to inject it with syringe. 
which I do a lot of time. A lot of time I apply it with syringe. Yeah, you put your needle when you're sewing, you just make sure that you you use the very, very edge of the skin because the skin tends to roll up and if you just push your needle right through the skin as soon as you feel it there is a chance that you're going to sew instead of the very edge you might be sewing a little bit further inside and then that will make your skin to basically come short instead of being in the real size you can make it tight for the body you can see if you notice I'm pushing the needle to the edge one or twice once or twice to make sure that I'm poking the very edge the thin edge of the skin for sewing So when you're sewing, make sure that you do not extremely pull your line during the sewing because that can basically, again, pull the skin together from top to bottom, from the upper part to the lower part too much, and then it will cause your feathers, your breast feathers, not to align properly. The, the stitching has to just close the sewing. I'm mean, sorry, close the incision. It's not supposed to be too hard. It's not supposed to be, or I'd better say, you don't have to make it too tight because there's not going to be any pressure on it. It's not like um, mammal taxidermy. There's not a lot, there, there is no pressure at all on the on the seam or on the incision. So you just have to close it. Okay, we're um, fast forwarding the blow drying part because uh, there is not much to talk about in here. We're just drawing every single feather on the bird.
Okay, now we're putting it on a piece of foam temporarily so uh, we get the bird in some sort of a shape before we transfer it to the permanent perch. Um, right now I'm just again, you know, using my needle to lift up all the feathers, make sure that they're all shingling on top of one another properly where they belong to. And I, I kind of like to, if it's, of course, if it's going to be a perched position with closed wing, I like to have it at least somewhat close to, to that shape um, on a temporary perch because I move around, I can move it around a lot easier, especially wall mounts. Um, sometimes the branch that I use, they don't allow me to work all around the bird. So I'd rather do all the hard jobs of the preening and the grooming on a temporary perch that I can just move it around, turn it around, and do all the work that I want before I finally put it into the branch that is going to sit there forever. It just speeds up my work, you know, by, by having more access to the bird instead of just trying to work around or dance around uh, the wall perch that uh, is not easy. I mean wall mounts they allow you to access the bird from the view side but the opposite side no there's always something blocking your access. Yeah, as you can see that uh, the owl is starting to take a regular shape or at least a general shape of a perched owl. Um, a majority of the wing positioning and feather grooming has been done to a good degree that uh, I can finish it with my limited access when it goes on the permanent perch. Okay, this is the permanent perch that we've picked out for this little guy. And uh, here, if you notice, I have only one, maybe an inch and a half length of wire sticking out of the feet. So that's why I'm pushing it into the thick perch 
in an angle. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to, like that perch where the bird is standing on is about like over two inch thick. So it doesn't need to go through all the way. Uh, I mean, that's just one way, but that will make you use a lot longer wire sticking out of the feet. So I usually angle it and push it through the wood with a couple of pre-made holes in an angle. And then I crazy glue where the, the feet is attaching um, is being attached to the, to, the, to the perch and then it stays there solid but you'd better know what you're doing in terms of the length oh, I'm sorry the, the placement of the feet because once you crazy glue it it's there it's there for good so now uh, I'm doing the final um, adjustments based on the pose that we picked and the wall perch that we have yeah you see the left wing here it's totally blocked by that uh, part of the perch. So if I really wanted to do all the grooming on here, right, right, like um, or positioning on the permanent perch, it would be a pain in the neck. Try to do it all right here because it just I pretty much 50% of my axis is gone because of this wall mount. So I better at least have 80% of the positioning done beforehand. So when I place it in there with a little bit of a limited access, I can bring it into the proper shape. Okay, this was it for today's video. I believe there is not a lot much more to, to talk about here. So I'm going to let you watch it with this speed of the video which is not at the highest and is not at the lowest it just keeps it interesting to watch um, how the little guy is being groomed and uh, getting the shape and uh, at the end I'll post um, final pictures okay thanks for watching hopefully you enjoyed the show we'll talk to you next week
Thank you.